Okay, in this video, we are going to evaluate a triple integral in cylindrical coordinates. So let's look at what we need to do, and then we'll try to do it. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a volume that's described. And what I like to do is think of it as finding the shadow in the xy plane. So think about the volume that you're given, maybe sketch some figures, um, work your way down to the shadow in the xy plane. And then once you have that, uh, we're going to try to describe that region using polar coordinates. So cylindrical coordinates are kind of like a 3D version of polar. Uh, you have all the polar stuff happening in the XY plane, and then uh, you just have Z. You can you can get out of the plane. You can go straight up, go straight down, um, or you can kind of curve around. Um, so that's the first thing we're going to do. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change all of the X's and Y's that are in the Z bounds to polar coordinates. Um, so we don't want to have x or y, we want r, theta, and z for our cylindrical coordinates. So we're going to make those substitutions. Then we're going to look at the integrand, change all the x's and y's that we see there into polar. Um, and then finally we're going to set up our integral. So our integral is going to look like it's triple integral. Um, it's going to be f of r, theta, z, because those are the variables when you're dealing with cylindrical. And then dv. So dv is... Um, not super complicated, but I find a lot of people forget that there's this one extra factor uh, that's the same factor that you get in polar coordinates. So for dv, it's r dz dr d theta. So don't forget that r. And then also use whatever order is convenient. Um, I would say dz dr d theta is by far the most common order, um, but I suppose you could switch it up if you want or need to. And uh, finally, you're going to evaluate the integral. Um, so I would say like 85% of the work is really steps one, two, and three. Um, and then after that, it becomes just an integral that you do. And uh, I mentioned polar several times, so in case you haven't thought about it in a little while, uh, x is going to be r times cosine theta, y is going to be r times sine theta, and then um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. All right, let's take a look at an example. Okay, for our example, we want to find the volume of a solid enclosed by z equals x squared plus y squared and z equals 9. So what I'm going to do first is try to get a sense of what's going on here. And the way that I do that is I look in, usually I look in either the um, xz plane or the yz plane. So for this one, I'm just going to look in the yz plane um, and see what we're dealing with. So uh, the z and the y axis. And then if I'm in the yz plane, then x is 0. So z equals x squared plus y squared just becomes z equals y squared, which is a parabola, and I can definitely sketch that. Um, looks a little like this. And then I also need to sketch in uh, z equals 9. So that's going to be a horizontal line um, in the uh, yz plane. So uh, I know that 3 and 9 are going to come up here because uh, if I set uh, z equal to 9, then I'm going to get y equals 3 from my z equals y squared. Um, and that's kind of a big deal. So uh, first, this picture shows me the uh, order of the bounds for z. So I know that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to z is less than or equal to 9. So I know the top and the bottom for z. Um, and now what I want to do is kind of think about what happens if I rotate this around the z-axis. I'm going to get circular cross-sections. So when I take that and project it down into the xy plane, I'm going to end up with a circle. So I'm trying to think about the shadow. That's what I mean by the shadow of this thing. So you'll always get a circular cross section. Um, and now I need to see what the biggest one of those would be. So if you look, um, as you rotate around the z axis, uh, that strip right there generates the largest circle you could get. And that circle will have a radius of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw the region. Um, it has a radius of 3. It's in the xy plane. So I'm going to describe this region using polar coordinates. So we want to describe this with polar. And if you remember, I said uh, like almost all the work is involved in actually finding the bounds. Then it just becomes a normal integral. Um, so uh, think about theta. So uh, we can go all the way around. So theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, think about r. We can start at the origin, go all the way out to 3, which is the radius. So we're going from 0 to 3. And that's pretty good because we just found our theta and our r values, our bounds. So the thing we have to do now is make sure our z bounds are actually in cylindrical coordinates, which they're currently not. So let's convert those. 
So we're gonna try to change the Z bounds. We already used our picture to work out the inequality. Um, so it's right there. So we're dealing with X squared plus Y squared, less than or equal to Z, less than or equal to nine. I need to get rid of those X's and Y's. And in polar, X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. And that's the same in cylindrical. So really R squared less than or equal to Z, less than or equal to nine. So we're really close now to just kind of finishing this problem. We found all of our bounds. Let's take a look. I'm gonna bring everything over to a new kind of slide. And uh, we are trying to find um, volume. Since Z depends on R, right, the bound depends on R, that has to go before DR. Um, so the normal order that I go in is gonna work here. So volume, which means that we're actually just gonna integrate DV. Uh, so it's like one DV. And remember, DV is R, DZ, DR, D theta, where you can rearrange the order, but what I'm not going to. Um, so let's write our triple integral. So zero to two pi, so that's gonna be D theta. And then zero to three, that's gonna be DR. And then R squared to nine, that's gonna be DZ. And then we're just integrating DV. So it's R, DZ, DR, D theta. Okay, and now it's just a normal triple integral. So if I integrate uh, this with respect to z first, I just pick up a factor of z. So I keep these two bounds. I'm gonna get r times z, and then uh, where z goes from r squared up to nine, and then there's still a dr d theta. I'm gonna use the fundamental theorem here. Um, so I'm gonna end up with zero to two pi, zero to three, r times, uh, you plug in nine, and then you subtract plugging in r squared, so we get just the quantity nine minus r squared. And then still a dr, still a d theta. And let's keep going. We're gonna integrate with respect to r this time. So it's gonna be the integral from zero to two pi. So what I'm gonna do is just distribute it in my head and then reverse the power rule. So integrate nine r, you get um, nine halves r squared, minus integrate um, r cubed, we get one fourth r to the fourth. And then uh, still, so r is gonna go from zero to three. And we still have d theta. Um, and so fundamental theorem, and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna sub in uh, three because when you sub in zero, it zeroes out, so you don't have to worry about that. So we just get um, 81 over two, and then minus 81 over four, and still d theta. Uh, 81 over two minus 81 over four is 81 over four four, and then we have the integral from zero to two pi of d theta. If you've done enough of these, you just know that that's two pi, and you actually kind of could have written that at the like very first step, uh, but I like to go through all the process anyway. And so we get 81 over four theta, where theta goes from zero to two pi, and we get this. So fundamental theorem just gives us two pi, and then finally, this is the volume of the solid that's been described, is 81 pi over two. So really it was changing the bounds that was a lot of work. And it just takes practice and you have to think about it a lot. The more polar you've done, the easier this will seem. Um, but I hope you found this helpful and good luck.